What's up guys, Donnie here. I have a very exciting video today because the future has finally arrived at my doorstep and that takes the form of Starlink. It has finally arrived today. I had my reservation since October of last year. Today we're doing an unboxing video, a installation and first impressions. So if you don't know what Starlink is yet, I'm just gonna read directly from the website. Starlink is the world's first and largest satellite constellation using a low Earth orbit to deliver broadband internet capable of supporting streaming, online gaming, video calls, and more. Leveraging advanced satellites and user hardware coupled with our deep experience with both spacecraft and on-orbit operations, Starlink delivers high-speed, low-latency internet to users all over the world. Most satellite internet services come from single geostationary satellites that orbit the planet at 35,000 kilometers. As a result, the round-trip data time between the user and satellite, also known as latency, is high, making it nearly impossible to support streaming, online gaming, video calls, or other high data rate activities. Starlink is a constellation of thousands of satellites that orbit the planet much closer to Earth at about 550 kilometers and cover the entire globe. Because Starlink satellites are in a low orbit, latency is significantly lower, around 20 milliseconds versus 600 or more milliseconds. For those of you who don't know what latency is, it's basically the time it takes for your internet to interact with the rest of the world. So if you're playing a game, it's basically the time it takes for you to press a button and for the game to realize you're doing something and for whoever is playing with you to see the action that you've taken. So the lower the number, the faster your internet is going, basically. Now, while Starlink has been operational for over a year now, they've rolled out the service slowly worldwide. They started in more remote areas when the number of satellites were fewer. As SpaceX launched more satellites into orbit on a weekly basis, they expanded to boats and mobile RVs, and finally into the suburbs where we live. So for our purposes, we'll be testing out the Starlink system in a more densely populated area and comparing it to our current provider Xfinity. So as you can see here, there's very few items inside the box itself. We have only four items here. We have the dish itself, the, the base for it, the power cord, and then the uh, wireless Wi-Fi router. You can see in the bottom, there's only two cords, the power cord and the cord to attach to the, um, the cable that attaches to the dish. Now, it is only Wi-Fi. You need a special adapter to put the rest in there. Uh, if you look at the base, this is, it's, it's a very broad, flat base meant to, to stand on like an open field or um, on a, in a patio area where there's a lot of space above you. You can tell that this is made for um, uh, areas where there's a lot of open space around. So if you, have, if you live in the city with just a balcony and if you're not on the top floor, you're kind of screwed in regards to using this, right? There are holes on the base here to be able to, to screw it into something to, to make it um, more uh, sturdy but the problem with this is it's very limited in how you can use it. It's not the best setup if you were going to put it on, say, a roof or something, right? And there's very few instructions, really. There's just <laughs> this one really big piece of paper here that says uh, connect it and let it see the sun, connect it, and then just use the app to do the rest. So everything is in the app. There's no 30-page booklet telling you what to do. This is just some kind of disclaimer. Now I did look online on the website to see if they had any mounting software or hardware and they do have a lot of different options um, in their online store. They have one that goes for uh, on top of your roof, on the side of your house. They also have masonry kits to go through uh, specific walls, slanted roofs, extras, as well as an ethernet adapter if you wanted to connect it directly into the router. So ideally this is where I would be putting the dish up where the old dish used to be. This is um, this was installed from before we uh, moved into the house. What's great about it is that there's already a line that goes straight into the master bedroom where we will, where I would put in the uh, router. We can get the cord straight through that hole already that's on there. Um, what's really good about this area is that there's very little over uh, overhanging trees, foliage, stuff like that. This tree is way below that line and uh, there's nothing around there. Uh, on that side of the house, there's pretty much nothing there. And in front of the house, there's absolutely nothing. So I did order the side mount for the uh, Starlink. Um, it, it is going to be on its way here along with the adapter. So I'm able to plug it in directly 
uh, from the computer to the router. Now, while we're waiting for that, um, as you can see over here, that location just around the corner, that's where the the um, other side, the other uh, dish is. Where I'm gonna put it for now is on this deck up here. This is in my backyard, the second floor. So down there is the backyard. The problem with this area is while it is higher above, it would be better on the roof, right? The problem with this area is there's so much foliage around. Now, um, this, where I'm standing probably is gonna be the best location for it if I was gonna put it here, just for now, just for our testing purposes. The, the biggest problem are really these three redwoods here. They're so tall. These are humongous. So we're gonna test out the coverage feature on the app and see what it looks like. I'm gonna to try to scan the entire sky with where we're going to be. Uh, let's see, starting from here. Interesting. I wonder if it if it's working properly. Okay, so it's estimating the obstructions. This may take a while. I might have to uh, just fast forward this part. Wow, look at that. Okay, so it says it might be a decent spot for your Starlink, uh, considering northwest, east, and south. So it actually looks to the northern side of the sky, which is very on the opposite side of where the redwoods are. So this is perfect. We're gonna try this out. All right, so I've jerry-rigged the Starlink dish outside onto the uh, patio over there. This open area it's going through the window just for now I'm not sure how I'm gonna close it tonight but we'll see and we're gonna go ahead and connect everything now okay let's do this first It looks like it's sealed pretty watertight in there, so I wonder if we can leave this outside. Of course, it is also made for RV camping. Okay, all right, now we're gonna continue setting it up on the app now. It is plugged in. Wow, that's interesting. It's named Stinky. Okay, uh, create a network, all right. Let's see. Okay, awesome. So your Starlink is acquiring GPS signal. This may take up to 15 minutes. Don't unplug your Starlink during this time. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and test out our current uh, internet broadband. We are going through Xfinity right now using the Ookla speed test. It is pretty reliable. Look at that, 180. Now this is connected directly from the tower to um, a mesh Wi-Fi uh, router node. So 181.83 download speed megabits per second by about 11, almost 12 megabits per second upload, which is very respectable. It's something you would expect here in the uh, city as well. Okay, now that we are online using Starlink, it is within, uh, it is still less than an hour since I first set it up. It is supposed to be checking obstructions for the next 12 hours and optimizing basically whatever it's doing. So let's go ahead and test out the speed anyway, just to see how it's at right now. Wow, that's not bad. Look at that, 70, 70s megabits per second. And very similar upload to Xfinity, 10 megabits per second upload. 54 millisecond latency, not horrible, but not very good, especially if you're gaming. But I think it would be less noticeable, especially at this speed, so it should be okay for now. Okay, now we're gonna do another test, this time on the desktop, the same service as uh, we did for Xfinity. The one on the app I did was through the um, what's the Starlink itself, the Starlink app. So we're gonna go ahead and try this again using Starlink. Looks like it topped off at about 30 and started dropping down to the 20s. This is now, this is using Wi-Fi 
from the router, from the Wi-Fi router, Starlink Wi-Fi router that's pretty much right next to the computer. Much lower compared to the um, compared to the app, 20 megabit download speed by 2.48 megabit upload speed. It could still be maximizing things. Again, it's going to be 12 hours at least to optimize its location. So we're going to go ahead and try this again tomorrow morning or later tonight possibly. Let's try it one more time right now. That's a much better result so far, about 65. 65 megabit per second download speed, the ping at 50. Um, previously, I believe the Xfinity ping was around 20s to 30s uh, on the both ways. Upload, still pretty mediocre, 1.86 megabits per second. Okay, screw it. Let's go ahead and test it out in gaming. Less than, in, less than one hour since we started setup of the Starlink service. We are going to go ahead and try it in the game. Today we are playing Heroes of the Storm. Yes, it is a dead game, but is it the best dead game? So let's see how well it does. Pretty responsive so far. It doesn't look like anything weird. Battle begins in 10 seconds. Alright, just letting everyone know I'm testing out Starlink. Five, four, three. Two, one. Fight with order. Yeah, there we go. Abba's on our team, so it's going to be four versus five with support. Hello. And oh, they have some. It seems very responsive so far. I don't feel significant lag. I think there's a little bit in the input. I mean. Uh, as much as you can, oh, come on. as much as you can feel, fifty milliseconds. Ooh, yeah, nice kill. So far, so good. You know, this is <laughs> this is very good. There's no lag so far. Of course, it, we're we are still testing it out, testing it out. Um, instruction wise, I don't know if it's gone to the big redwoods back there in the backyard. So we'll see. What do we got? What do we got? How is the ping? It's still good. I haven't really felt any difference. Any glaring uh, speed slowdowns here. I haven't noticed very much in the way of uh, lag. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Now, let's stop here, it's gonna be too much recording. Well, that's it. Looks like uh, we finished the game with pretty much zero uh, drops, no lag, no 
a very little noticeable latency actually i didn't really feel much in there it felt like a normal game through the xfinity uh, broadband okay we're doing one more test right after the game see where we're at okay 90s low uh 80s to 90 79 about 80 megabits per second maybe just a little bit less than that upload speed a little higher six three times faster than the 2.9 we saw earlier or uh, one point something ping is actually worse than before but this was right after the game and i don't really feel it as if it was 81 ping of course it's not like it was a, a twitch game like um like call of duty or something but you could definitely feel it in a moba like that okay i decided to test out how many things i can stream at once without any uh, any lag in between seems to be working fine so far let's see what happens if we um, change the channel i load pretty fast okay Huh, still loads pretty quickly considering. Now that I've analyzed your blood sample, it's way too dangerous to get out in the world. Thunderball, did you get it? Uh, sounds to be fine. I couldn't pierce that nasty green skin. Previously on she I've got court documents filed by So this is all on, on a single uh, computer, obviously, using the same Wi Fi here. It's pretty stable. Nothing is uh, slowly. Looks like it's slowing pretty far ahead. Looks pretty good to me. Well, let's do a speed test while we're, we're at it. Would you have gone on the date if She Hulk had instead presented as Jennifer Walters? Let's see. I, I think I need to lower the volume. There, let's lower the volume a little bit. Now let's do a speed test while we're watching three things. Over. Huh, look at that. Still pretty good considering. Did this pause? Oh nope, it's like that. Look at that. Mid 50s, upload speed. Still dismal, but everything is very fluid except for this one. Let's, let's fast forward and see what happens. It loads very quickly, so. I feel like the thing that's stuttering is my video card, my graphics card, but it looks good. Looks good so far. Okay, now we're going to test the connection. Uh, the router range, we're on the opposite side of the house, currently in the garage. The Starlink router is upstairs in the office on the very other side of the house, and we are on the bottom floor of the garage, inside the garage. Now there is... A room about two, how many floors and ceilings? One floor in between us and about two, two to three walls in between this and the router. There currently we are not, we have no uh, extensions or mesh Wi-Fi's in the house. So let's see how this does. Let's try that again. Let's do YouTube. Okay, let's see. Let's check this out. If I don't get dialysis three days a week, I will die. That's pretty good. I have Very quick. Skip these ads. I mean, it's already pretty this quick. This video, a long-term Tesla bull makes some rather silly comments about Tesla's humanoid robot that will not ape. Okay. A surprising move by Disney for the Very quick, season. very Disney's quick. getting ready to lose more cast members and have these... Right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Very oh, fast. Look at that. Very good. Okay, so I have run several speed tests throughout the day. Uh, this one is around uh, just afternoon on the app, on the Starlink app. Looks like it's about 120 megabits per second with a pretty low latency. The upload is insanely high, actually. I'm not sure why it's going so pretty high. Uh, let's see. My next test is going to be on Ookla itself, which is actually going to be, um, I don't know, more realistic, but definitely a different result here it looks like it was hovering around 20 megabits per second and then it suddenly started to shoot up at a higher rate of speed so average 71 megabits per second download speed 
that was also around the same time, uh, 148 in the afternoon. This is of course still the, uh, the day after. And I did another test right after that and it was much higher, 160s, 170 megabits down, uh, per second downward, download. So they average anywhere from 50 to 160 megabits per second. This next one is gonna be in the uh, evening of that same day, around 4 or 5 p.m. when there is much more activity throughout the day, more people on the service. You can see here that it's pretty low, 20s. And the upload speed is also low, about four megabits per second. And I did several more tests pretty much to confirm that same speed. There were times when it was higher, around 50, but it was generally around 20 megabits per second, around 4 or 5 p.m. Uh, and I did another test a little bit after that, around 5 o'clock, and it was much higher, about 80 megabits per second. Now, this test was around the morning, around 7 a.m. in the morning. You can see the speed is pretty insane, 200 megabits per second, just a little bit lower than that with a pretty good upload speed too, about six megabits per second. And then I did another one around 8 a.m. As you can see here, it was pretty high as well still, 148.2. But in general, in the afternoon, it is pretty, um, pretty congested at a lower speed, anywhere from 20 to 50 megabits per second. All right, guys, I think we have a pretty good baseline with where SpaceX's Starlink is right now. It is still in the works. There, um, not all of the satellites have been launched yet. I believe they have several thousand up to go. And this is going to be in the suburbs in the afternoon when there are more people on the service. The range goes anywhere from 20 to 50 megabits per second. In the morning, when there's not that many people, it can go up to as high as 180. Um, when I did play games some la last night, I played a few games. And there was one time when it uh, completely lagged out and kicked me out of the game. Um, this is one of the few instances of course we still have about 30 days of testing so i'm going to keep on keep the service on for the next 30 days and see how it goes if it improves or not um, if more people join the service then obviously it may still decline it may decline who knows how well it's going to do but it's important to keep in mind the the real world uh, use of this service it's not like i'm going to be gaming 24 7 when i'm streaming anything on using this service I pretty much have no issues. It's exactly the same as if I was using the Xfinity service, which you know is very stable because it's, it's ground wire. It's through the cable. So it's very fast and very um, stable. Now, because streaming does not need a constant connection where you're inputting keys into the game and um, waiting for a response from the, other, from the server or from other players, you're not gonna feel the difference. So this is uh, one of the big things with with the speed of the service, it, it really, um, there's there's really no downside if it's streaming or low latency tasks that you need to do. So we'll see how it goes over the next 30 days. I'll make a few more videos and at least one more final video um, grading it. I will probably install the satellite on the roof and mount and uh, see if that changes anything as well. And I'll run it through the wall, um, like I said before. Uh, if you like this video, if it, you found it helpful or informative, please like and subscribe. It'll really help the channel out. Thank you so much for um, watching the video and we will see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.